Hi, welcome to the Commercial Gas Engineer channel. Just attended this site to find that there were two boilers not operating. When I came over to the units, I found that both had locked out. And generally, when I see two units not operating, or three or four many units, I think it's either an electrical problem or a gas problem. Because either the electrics have, caught, have tripped or a smoke alarm um, test has taken place and the gas um, solenoid has stopped the gas supply, something to that effect. Well, I before hitting the reset, I just made a note. Some, before resetting boilers, you should make a note of what fault you have, as you know. So I held down the reset for about six seconds and then on boiler number one, this is boiler number one, on boiler number one, after doing so, boy, the boiler went through the ignition sequence and started up. However, on boiler number two, this bad boy over here, after doing so, it didn't go for the ignition sequence. What it did is it went to a lockout. And so there the process began of trying to work out what was wrong with the boiler. These are some of the things that I did. I didn't do all of them. You may see a tick, but I didn't do all of them. Um, this is just to give you a perspective of when you come across a boiler not working, there's a few things that you need to do. There's more, but this is just a guideline. So first of all, try and get pen and paper right. When you know, like I knew with boiler number two, I had something that wasn't so simple. I hit the reset, it wasn't coming back on. So it looked like it wasn't anything easy and it was taking me more than 10 to 15 minutes. So I went and got some paper and I determined that I'm gonna fix the problem. Like you can, sometimes you have the time to, sometimes you haven't, but if you have got the time, try to make time because this is quite important. I've got two boilers here, one's working. I could walk away and say, oh, there's one working, but I determined to myself that I'm going to do all I can to fix this boiler. So got paper out, wrote a list and then go start going through a list systematically if you don't do this try and do it clear your mind make sure that you're comfortable turn your phone off if you have to put it on silent but focus on fixing the problem and have a clear mind so i wrote down what i was going to try and do and then anything else that came to mind whilst i was trying to fix the boiler i wrote it down so i didn't forget so first savastat at the back of the boiler went to the savastat to make sure that there was no problems that it wasn't holding the boilers off I was fine. So I, I was fine with that. Then I went to the next thing, overheat thermos, overheat sensor. Went down here, double checked that. That was fine. So I went next in the list, wiring for checking for continuity. So what I did is I went to the back of the boiler and I turned the power off, did my safe isolation. And then what I did is I checked my terminals. I went round, made sure everything was there. I did find a loose connection on, on one of my wires and put that back into place, tightened it up and then just filled wires, inspecting them more. Then I did continuity tests between two wires, put the beep indicator on and then just did my testing and so on. Checked as many wires as I could to see if there were good connections between many, but there's so many wires in here. It's it's hard to so I was looking for loose connections checking my earth connections that they were fine and connected and no damage and so after that was done now um, I went to look on here and then checked my wiring from so I checked my wiring on U V and D here's U V and D checked my wiring made sure it was on the same call I was getting from boiler one, a good boiler, to boiler two, the bad boiler. So I was checking, I was getting the same calls for heat. So all looked well there. Then now I went to check the manual. It's good to have manuals downloaded in your phone, especially when you come across a boiler that you're working on. It is good to have the manual downloaded. So if you haven't got internet, you can just look at the manual. Another thing now, so I went and looked in the manual, see what I could find out. Then had to move on to contact the manufacturer. Spoke to the manufacturer. A manufacturer was saying to me that it looks like a short circuit has taken place and so on. So this bit was up here. So that's why I started to, 
well, it was about here. After I did all of this, uh, about here is when I checked, contacted the manufacturer. They told me to check my wiring. So I checked my wiring, I was checking my wiring nonstop. Then um, I didn't contact a colleague, but sometimes you can contact your colleagues or somebody just contact contact people if you have to and say this is these are my symptoms be very clear in what your symptoms are write them down if you have to before you make the phone call and just be and and explain this is what i have done this has led to this and so on and so forth this is how much current i have be ready to give them the answers to the questions you may get to the problem whilst telling them you may find what the answer is you might be like you may figure it out whilst you're telling them because it can become more clear and apparent what the problem is in your head you can even speak to someone that has nothing that doesn't know anything about boilers about the issue and you may be able to get to the problem by speaking to them okay next thing now remember when you're contacting technical support it depends who you get through to some technical support agents will they will really want to help you and get to the bottom of your problem some will not care at all what their problem is so at the same time as well, they don't know everything. They're trying, but they don't know everything. So take it with a pinch of salt as to what they're saying. Listen to what they say, write it down, what they say. Have a pen in your hand if you have to, to write down what they say. They may give you a lot of details. Ask them to send you literature if need be, the manufacturer's instructions or other things. Send them pictures if you can as well to what you're encountering. But don't give up. They're there for a reason. Contact them. Contact them again. Don't be afraid to contact them again if you have to. All right? next um so the, we've got to here now now swap parts so this is how i fixed the problem in the end so i came up here now and then this board what i did was i saw that when i reset the unit the light was coming on to this board and then that just shortly after i was getting my fault cold so what i did it's quite easy a few connections here turn the power off safe isolation and then swapped it over onto my bad boiler number two and then lo and behold my bad boy number two boiler wasn't locking out anymore and it came on but then i put my suspected bad board into my boiler number one which was working before then that lit up as well so what i believe is that the, there was a loose connection here going into the board so that solved it and my boiler is working both my boilers are working my calorifier is going up to temperature it was only 40 celsius when i arrived here so that's good news okay so if i got to this point here and then after swapping the parts still no joy i mean i could have gone as far as swapping out i could have asked for a um i don't know a pcb main pcb or different bits but you don't want to get it wrong so could have asked for further investigation and asked for a colleague to come back with me because the good thing about having a colleague coming back with you is that you can go through it and you've not just that passed the buck you can find out what's wrong with it and you're learning remember at the same time when you are going through a, a problem with a boiler and it's taking you longer than normal to get to the bottom of it you're learning to say to yourself i'm learning something here which is going to help me win my next fight so don't worry about not being able to fix the problem if you don't in the end and if you're unable to go back to the job inquire about what happened what was wrong with that boiler um ask the colleague that goes back there or your manager or whoever goes and may um and you may have to pass all the information that you've discovered so you save them time pass it on to them so it's good to do things systematically so you can give people the information they need to know so um yeah i hope that's helped you um i just wanted to express to you certain key things when you're doing boiler diagnosis sometimes it's not about all the information that's in your head it's about your attitude towards approaching the breakdown whether you're stressed i mean sometimes when you come across these i may have said it earlier turn your phone off or put it on silent and just concentrate on what you're dealing with nothing else just focus on it it takes a lot of concentration and, and focus to fix certain difficult breakdowns so just make sure you're in the right frame of mind who cares if you've got another job afterwards? Just try to get it rescheduled or if there's more time, focus on fixing that one problem. You want to have a high hit rate, a high success rate when fixing. If you're going to 100 callouts, you want to be fixing over 90% of them without any callback. All right. Thank you for joining me. All the best with your next um, callouts and so on and diagnosis. Until next time. Bye bye bye.